Hi guys, welcome to Speak Up Africa, a civic engagement digital platform. My name is Nancy Mtansi Kinyanjui, and I am your host. Like I always say, remember to check out our social media pages that is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. Subscribe on our YouTube channel and uh, and uh, LinkedIn as well. I've mentioned that. Check out some of the topics we have covered. Let us know what you think. Comment on the drop your comment on the comment section, and we want more of your engagement. Today, guys, we talk about youth and leadership. And over and over again, we've had that youth are the leaders of tomorrow. But what are, we, what are we doing about it at the moment? Are the opportunities available for them? And to the ones that have clinched to these seats, for instance, in politics, have they brought the change they have been advocating for? And are they the leaders of integrity that they have been talking about? Well, today I'm joined by a gentleman from Uganda by the name Jack Tosime. Uh, Jack Tusimi is joining us in this conversation, and uh, um, he is a regional coordinator of East African Youth Network, which is an umbrella body of youth organizations in seven partner states in East African County, sorry, East African Community. He also he is also the founder of Uganda Youth Senate, an organization that focuses on leadership, governance, and economic empowerment. Thank you very much, uh, Jack, for agreeing to join us and be part of this conversation. Thank you so much, Nancy, for hosting me. And uh, I am very great to be on this platform. Um, I hope uh, we get to, to touch base with our young people in Africa and maybe in the whole world. Uh, talk about this issue of uh, leadership. I yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Um, when we get straight into it, uh, Jack, what do you, what comes in your mind when you hear of youth and leadership? What do you think about it? Um, youth and leadership, uh, I will just talk on the perspective of the East African community and uh, on the broader perspective. But uh, most of my uh, uh, conversation with you today will be just hinged on the East African community because that's where I have some experience. Uh, one, uh, youth and leadership uh, in the East African community. We all know that uh, the East African community is among the youngest blocks, uh, the regional economic committees in Africa, and most probably in the region, over 60% of uh, people who are below 35 in uh, seven partner states are young people. And when you talk about uh, leadership at the moment, it's uh, something that has been critical in this particular century for us who are born in it. So uh, youth uh, in leadership, first of all, is provided for in uh, the East African Community Treaty. That is articles 128, 129, and 127. It is also uh, provided for in all the partner states, the seven partner states have tried to ensure that they put the young people in uh, at the forefront of governance with some, uh, of course, issues with standing. And uh, we, for example, in the East African uh, youth policy, we define a young person as someone who is between 15 and 35 years. So, that when we're talking about the youth, that's what we talk about. And uh, when you talk about the leadership of the young people, we can talk about across spheres because we've seen young people in real leadership politics who are running as member of parliament, who are in the national youth councils, but we also have seen the youth in the private sector. Young people who are doing business, uh, young people who are in agriculture, Young people who are in a faith-based organization, they are also finding leadership from there. And uh, we talk about um, the young people in uh, institutions of higher learning. We have uh, seen young people take critical leadership uh, roles in uh, universities, for example, as guild presidents. We have seen students taking up leadership in uh, 
national uh, the students associations so it's a broader perspective and uh, what i can say is that uh, as a region we have tried to mentor young people to take up leadership positions. And uh, historically, if you look at our governments that are actually currently on, most of our leaders took uh, these positions when they were young. So we can now discuss uh, the issues of participation and the influence at that particular level. But what I can say is that uh, the young people of uh, East African community are, are at the forefront of leadership and they are doing critical roles yeah. in, uh, in ensuring that we achieve our agenda of uh, sustainable development. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jack, you are a founder of an organization that uh, deals with uh, leadership and governance. And now that you've mentioned, you've mentored youth. Uh, in leadership, what is your experience in leading young pe young people? Uh, thank you so much. One, I must appreciate the zeal and enthusiasm when it comes to leading young people, because young people have found out that they are very passionate. There are some have found who are very dynamic and who are eager to learn. That's what I can say. I can first talk about the opportunities that I've seen. We have uh, mentored young people to go on and become members of parliament, for example, in Uganda. We have mentored young people to come out and be uh, in good positions of uh, uh, private sector. Then we have young people who are doing business and they are doing well. We have young people who are, uh, of course, uh, at the forefront of making sure that decisions and policies in different uh, sectors, be it uh, government, university, and, uh, and, and, and different sectors, uh, the MDAs, that is uh, ministries and department and uh, development and uh, other associations at the forefront of uh, critical decision-making. However, uh, my experience with young people is that um, uh, the issue of uh, information, when it comes to information, when it comes to data sharing, when it comes to knowing the real content, that's uh, where I've found a gap. That young people are zealous to do work, but most of the times we tend to jump uh, uh, into some things that we are not clear and uh, uh, okay, I can say maybe we'll make decisions very fast and harshly and we can easily be misled and that's why uh, we still see the challenges of influence even us being the majority not coming out clearly because uh, once we are mentored very well, once we invest in information, once we invest in uh, uh, systems, yeah. because we tend to jump systems. You feel like you want to be a president tomorrow, but you don't know what yeah. system yeah. you want but to go through. Takes... To reach out there. Yes, yeah. so uh, that's, that's, that's something that I've seen. And again, that's where I've seen people can easily mislead us because they will tell you, you know what, Nancy, I want you to be this, but you really don't have any clue and yeah. you end up uh, making uh, something that is messy. Yeah. Then I've also, that we have, I've also realized, um, uh, of course, of opportunities with standing, but I've also seen that uh, uh, young people are uh, being, um, we, have, uh, we have been used some are to a certain extent as tools of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, political uh, mass, I can call it political, um, the word is um, maris. Mm, yeah. And young people are being used to, to be malicious, to spoil, to abuse 
to do all those bad things because yeah. of uh, not investing in systematic ways of yeah. being young leader. And yeah. that's why I'm like, we still need her to be mentored. We still need to invest in information. We still need to define and look at the critical role of a leader, not just jumping into things just yeah. like that. Yeah. That, 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 that's the experience that I can share. Yeah. Um, Jack, we've seen, like, yeah. uh, for example, in, in politics, when some of the youth uh, want to venture to politics and when they're campaigning, in one of the promises that they give people is that um, we are going to fight for the rights of young people. They use that as a campaign tool. Do you feel they are actually uh, fighting for the rights of young people? Um, one of the, uh, okay, I like, it also goes back to what we were talking about, uh, not knowing what you want or not being ready, not investing in this, in so that we can take up this position. Because I'll give you an example that young people, we still have a challenge of working in silos. We want to work as individuals we don't want to move together. And you know, the moment you want to move alone, that's how someone will easily manipulate you. So the moment we come out and we say we are united and we take clear policies, we will not be, because that is rhetoric. When you see these leaders are rhetorically targeting young people. I'll give you an example. In uh, East Africa, Young people are still taken as um, an interest group. They are being given uh, nominated positions, and there are these unfair policies of uh, experience. To get a job, you need to be 15 years or something. So we need, the, of course, there are these issues of uh, the minimum wage. The young people who are working in the Juakari sector who are not formalized. So all, all these policies are there typically to cripple the young people. Because if someone tells you that I'm going to fight for you, you really need to first think critically and look at the policies. Mm. Are but you see, policies this, are these, these are the youth, they are the, they are the youth leaders. When they are, you know, when they are when they're looking for votes, they promise their uh the other youth guys that uh, I'm going to fight for you guys. And that's why I was asking, are they really doing that the moment they get these seats? Are they really representing the youth as promised? Uh, I was coming to that because it, you see, it's a systematic uh, uh, kind of thing. Uh, when these young people are being, uh, first of all, the positions they are campaigning for are positions that are just given as nominated, as uh, interest groups. So first, they are already little positions. Second, the policies that are available cannot favor these young people to do what, to take up those, those, those uh, to take up the mantle and uh, have influence. Because if I said I want to fight for the rights of the young people in parliament. Hmm? And I reach in parliament or in an assembly and I find I'm only two or I'm with my colleague, we are only three, you get. So it becomes hard for us to collectively fight. Maybe we are, we, 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 we end up now losing the battle on the front of numbers, but again, to come to, okay, to answer you directly is that uh, some people who take up these positions maybe don't invest in themselves very well to ensure that they know what exactly are they supposed to offer or where they are going. Because if you're saying you're fighting for rights of the young people, then you should be able to mobilize the young people to take up these constituencies that you find yourselves very many, not mm -hmm. alone. And that's yeah. how you can move together and push an agenda. Mm -hmm. So it's, it all begins with uh, a starting point because the foundation mm -hmm. is not level. Yeah. And once you reach out there, 
you will find you a victim of uh, of uh, patronage because mm -hmm. uh, if you're five alone and you don't have money the big guys will patronize you and they will use you to oppress your guys even when you took the office when you had good intention you mm -hmm. find yourself not doing the the right work but uh, I can say that there are young people out there who are really fighting for the rights of others. These young mm -hmm. people may be in civil society, like you, Nancy, yeah. doing a great job, because we, we couldn't look at leadership as only political. There are young women whom I know who are the forefront of fighting for women's rights in the region. There are young business ladies, young businessmen who are in the workers' unions, who are in the employers, and they are fighting for the rights of the young people. Yeah. So when we are looking at this broader perspective, we we tend, of course, you know, politics here is just a a, a game of uh, of numbers and maybe playing on people's minds because we have seen that uh, politics in the region is not working at the moment. So we sometimes maybe tend to go to civil society and uh, other sectors to see the real people who are fighting. But for for politics, I don't think we we, we have a political will to empower young people at the moment. And uh, I hope, <laughs> okay, the um, government. But I would I would I won't fear to say this. We really have a, we really have a challenge when it comes to youth participation and influence. Yeah. Yeah. How do we safeguard uh, youth, uh, youth leadership? I mean, how do we uh, safeguard good leadership among the youth? You know, you spoke about well, mentorship, which is very important. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. else can we safeguard it? One thing I want to first say is that we need to change our mindset our mindset to ensure that we stop working in silos. Let's come together as young people. Let's push these policies together. Once we are united, it's going to be very easy to find uh, someone out there to mentor us, find uh, an organization to support our businesses, to find a uh, uh, a president or a secretary general of this African community uh, coming to us, finding us organized and hearing our voices as one. They will make sure that we push the policies that can what? That can uh, empower us. Then when it comes to like our capacity and technical skills, we as young people must invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's know how things are done. Let's learn how to plan. Let's uh, read. Let's look at uh, these policies. Let's know what we want. Let's be patriotic. And, uh, you know, the element of Pan-Africanism, looking at ourselves as one person, mm -hmm. as Africans, and pushing the agenda of, uh, of, 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 of our nation is what will take us forward. Because if we are still looking at ourselves as uh, tribe X, tribe Y, or I'm a woman, the other one is a man, or this and this, we are not going to move as young people. So that's something also we need to focus on. And of course, mentorship, that one goes without saying. But still, mentorship comes with investing in yourself. You must have the right attitude. You get yeah, yeah. Just have the right attitude towards uh, governance, towards leadership, and have the attitude of changing the society. You have to have a clear values because one of the things sometimes where we fall short is that we are greedy, want to be corrupt, want to run and grab each and everything here and there. But I believe if we follow these real values, we, we will be good to go. But um, the direct answer is, let's stop working in silos. Yeah. If we are united, we will reach far. Yeah. 
Um, Jack, what do you think uh, should be done to um, to encourage the youth more to get into leadership? I mean, to inspire them. Yeah, I, I think um, young people, people are already an opportunity to lead. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to give young people an opportunity to lead. Yeah. Uh, of course, one, we are in the world where uh, there are very few things that can be provided on a silver plate. So what we need to do is, first of all, to fight for our space as youth. Because I know we have been crying for youth participation, yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't think people will come out and give it to us. So we just need to make sure that we push ourselves and occupy uh, these seats. Someone was uh, a, a common saying, I think it's a Kenyan saying, that if you're not on the table, mm -hmm. then you're on the menu. Yeah. So let's try to fight and be on the table so that we can make this decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is that... Um, Let's now use the opportunity when we have given that, when we get that opportunity, mm -hmm. because it's us, the young people, who will inspire our fellow young people. Mm -hmm. Let's not be sellouts. For example, if I get an opportunity to serve, let me use that opportunity that will be mirrored in all societies to show that Nancy has been at this forefront, is a young person, and is doing the great work. You get? Yeah. You'll be an example because uh, we have seen people saying, ah, we give you positions and you're just there, you're drinking, you're running around, you're uttering some uh, words that are not in the decorum or you're not doing the work that you're supposed to do. So yeah. when, when, when you get an opportunity, please use it very well. Then the issue of planning. If uh, young people are to be great leaders and uh, participate and get positions, let's invest in planning. If you know that you want to be a leader X and you want to inspire the whole village, plan for it. Don't yeah. just come and bump into it. We have seen these visions, they put agenda, African Union agenda 2063, there is the ESC Vision 2050. I know the countries, partner states are having their own agendas, but we are not investing in these agendas. And I believe we are the people to push this. So if we plan, we can even bring in policies that can favor us to lead. For example, I'll give you an example of, of course, even women are still, they are saying they are, they are, interest groups, but they have at least reached a certain hierarchy in, uh, in as far as negotiating for leadership positions and, and, and putting themselves out there is concerned. You've seen a women movement has been moving steadily with its own challenges, but at least we have seen some results. Yeah. So an African woman in the 1940s, is not the same African woman right now. Yeah. So if we can also look at that and say we need to systematically lobby for these policies and see how best we can, because I know Rwanda, Kenya, Burundi, Tanzania, uh, yeah, they, they are they are they have really pushed policies that are uh, that are favoring women in leadership. Yeah. We have seen the gender rules coming. We have seen mm -hmm. uh, a certain percentage is coming. So yeah. we need to see young people also pushing these policies that are favoring them. Yeah. If we are the East African Legislative Assembly and we say yeah. we want 20 seats for young people, yeah. and these young people must be there, serve, mm -hmm. live, and give others an opportunity. With that, I think we'll increase the youth mm -hmm. in leadership. Yeah, you've mentioned something that has actually caught my attention when you've spoken about um, the policy making and also including the youth at the table. What are some of the strategies that we should use to 
to have them more included in policy making and also decision making processes. One thing we need to do, we need to invest in robbing. Mm -hmm. uh, gone are the days where people used to use uh, hammers and what to fight, but now we can use our intellectual capacity, the internet, the mm -hmm. technology to lobby. And if we lobby these people, we can get uh, good policies because um, I'm looking at the policies that, that are favoring young people. That is one. Two, we need to revisit the policies that are existing and uh, because some of these policies are there but people who are occupying these seats are not the youth yes so we must uh, ensure that we move and we go to that another one is uh, investing in uh, leadership academies investing in mentorship we invest in the youth hubs to ensure that we not only focus on politics alone, mm -hmm. but we drive the whole value chain of leadership. Mm -hmm. When I go to a central bank, I want to see a young woman who is below 35 as uh, the director. Mm -hmm. And how will we do that? We'll ensure that we fight the policies that are asking for uh, years of experience. Rather, we put schools out there that will be mentoring these young people to get skills in leadership and governance, not to wait for you to be 50 and you take up that, that role. Mm -hmm. When we go to the army, for example, when we go to the police, we go to sectors in energy, agriculture, all the spheres of life want to see young people at the forefront. Yeah. And it will be those young people who, who will Just be easily... Allow me to cut you short because of time, because I can see we are running out of time. As we wind up, can you just tell us maybe what are some of the qualities, important qualities of a youth leader that you feel like a youth leader should, should have before it... Uh, because we're running out oh, of time. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. As a, yeah, there are, there, are these, uh, other policy, there are these other qualities that are always there. But me, I want to focus on uh, the modern qualities, the modern young person who should be, whom we feel is up there and can inspire and mm -hmm. take, take, that, take up that. The modern young person who can lead is that person who is uh, having, who has armed him or herself with information. Yeah. You must be knowledgeable on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That is one. The modern young person whom I want to see in leadership is that Pan-African person. That person who is not looking at him or herself at a tribal level, but the person who is looking at him or herself as a Pan-African. Mm -hmm. I want to look at the person who has that particular integrity. The, the person who will put his or her fellow peers in mm -hmm. front of his own interests. Yeah. yeah. That is the person I want. And the last one, maybe I see you, you want me to run, but yeah. I want the, a dot com person. So sorry. In, I want a dot com person who knows yeah. the existence of technology at the moment because that yeah. is the person who will change the industry, who mm -hmm. will inspire the young people to yeah. get money and prosper and take their communities forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, we finally come to the end of this discussion and to the upcoming youth leaders. I have, and I hope you have taken note of what uh, Jack has shared and the insights as well. Definitely, I know this will inspire you to not only take part in leadership roles, but also be the leader that you have always been advocating for. Uh, Jack, Asante Sana, oh, sorry. Thank you very much for your time. Ah, it's okay. Asante <laughs> Sana. Eh. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope we get to do this once again. Yeah. And uh, to our viewers, thank you. Just this video, we're going to post it on our social media. So let us know what uh, you think. Share your comments, share your ideas, comment there. And also to our speaker platform,
log into our speaker platform that is speakupafrica.net. Remember to follow us again on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and YouTube. My name is Nancy Mtansi Kinyanjui. I've been your moderator. Have a lovely week.